In the 1920s, Detroit was growing at an unbelievable rate. The automobile was still relatively new, but was quickly turning Detroit into an industrial powerhouse. With the industry rapidly developing, new homes, office buildings, roads, and schools were being built to handle this population explosion. However, since the city's peak in the 1950s, the city saw a decline of population, leaving many buildings abandoned. Join us as we discover Detroit's past and see what remains. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Start protecting yourself on the web at nordvpn.com slash properpeople and use the code properpeople at checkout to get 75% off a three-year plan with an extra month for free. The Fisher Building, completed in 1928, is a perfect example of a well-preserved architectural masterpiece of the time. The building was constructed by the Fisher family and funded by the proceeds from the sale of the Fisher Body Company to General Motors. This fantastic 30-story Art Deco building housed offices and retail space and sparked a new development of a brand new business district just north of downtown. The building even includes one of Detroit's oldest live theater venues. There's all these like tenants up there. There's thrift, industry, commerce, navigation, justice, peace, knowledge, and agriculture. It's kind of sad because you know another building like this is never going to be built again in the course of human history. We just need to keep alive what we still have. They got there. It says logos. This building is truly a work of art displaying hand-painted murals symbolizing the pillars of Detroit's economy and the power of the United States. There were additional plans to more than double the size of the complex that were canceled due to the Great Depression. However, we are just lucky to be able to still experience this building as is. Many buildings weren't as lucky as the Fisher Building and couldn't be preserved. Cooley High School also opened in 1928. Originally with a design capacity of 1,500 students, it became apparent before it was even finished being built that enrollment would be more and additional units were planned. The school quickly grew to one of the largest in the city with over 3,400 students in 1983. But by 1989, that number had fallen to only 2,500, and by 1997, it was only 1,400. By 2010, the student population dropped below 1,000. It didn't make any financial sense to continue operating a building of this age as it became increasingly empty. It was announced in 2010 that the school would close along with 41 others. We're going to take you inside one of Detroit's once greatest public schools. Take a classroom. Is that door open if you pull on that? Yeah. I mean, it just goes into this room. Yeah, it just goes through there. <laughs> From their deck of tournaments. For this episode, we're joined by Freaktography. His YouTube channel and Instagram links are in the description below.
Is this a courtyard back here? Yeah. Oh yeah, the windows. Oh no, they're still plexiglassed back here. Even though it's a courtyard. How did we not end up seeing back here? Well, you can't get back here. It's a courtyard. Are you sure? Because look, there's the modern building over there. Pretty sure we walked past that big wooden thing and that's yeah. the entrance into here. It's got a smokestack here. Did this school have its own power plant? It might have been for a high name, school. But you can find out. This place closed in 2010 and they still have blackboards. Some decent floor tiling. Floors in my high school were just plain white. Marble walls. I mean, it's probably fake marble. But it's nicer than just nothing. Like this. Look at the bathroom in here. Marble everything. So, this is the auditorium that suffered a fire recently. It looks like the seats are the only thing that burned though, and the rest of it is still. These were all bright red seats. Yeah. Still and amazing for a high the school. The curtain and everything was there before too. Look yeah. at the glass melted on there. Wow. On the light fixture. That's amazing. It's melted. It's like even if this theater was just alone and not part of a high school, it would still be a place we try to see. Yeah. It's like fully detailed all the way around. Even this back entry that we just came in through. At the center of the school is this beautiful 1,000 seat auditorium. This auditorium built to the standards of a theater of the time was unusual to find in a public school, even when it was new. This school was considered an architectural showpiece of the education system in Detroit. In September 2017, a large fire engulfed the auditorium in flames, quickly burning all of the seats and causing extreme damage. Thankfully, the firefighters were able to keep the fire from spreading to other parts of the building. Do you think one of them did it? Steel wool, Jesus. It must have burned quick though. Like it must have been just the chairs and then it fizzled out because um, there's not smoke damage in here. Very minimal smoke damage. But I mean, the flames must have been getting pretty high because you can see the lights up there melted and charred. I wonder if that was like the crest of the school or just some random design they put there. I mean, I'm impressed already. Even though I did see some pictures of this, it's exceeding expectations. I didn't realize it was quite this detailed in here. It's pretty charred in here. It's weird how it's charred in here but nowhere else. That is strange. Has anybody like cleaned it? Maybe this type of material just doesn't hold the smoke. It might be just what happened. Careful up there. Looks pretty sketchy. It's pretty sketchy walking up the stairs. <laughs> Check it out. There's a stairwell all the way up there too. That one looks like a death trap though. Those stairs are not good. I wonder if this all came down in the fire. 100%. Yeah, look how twisted it is. It got really hot. Wait, I thought uh, fire can't melt steel beams. Well. <laughs> Those look pretty melted to me. Don't get tangled in this maze here. The floor is bad right there.
This chair survived the fire. Here's a fire door that looks like it stayed open during the fire. But the fire did not spread past the auditorium. You can go down beneath the stage. It's probably screwed under there. We held backstage your brain to lock it. I'm gonna go up here. This feels solid still. That door is sealed. Oh, this is a uh, dressing room. Still smells really smoky in there. The floor is collapsed in here. Just another dressing room. For someone um, scrapped some pipes. Fire alarm. Some more classrooms up here. Oh, there is fire damage up here. So it did spread to out here. Or at least the smoke all billowed into here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was just smoke damage. Because you can see the bottoms of the walls are There's not burned. Not too burned here, really. Yeah. The walls are just this marble, and then this brick behind it. Doors are just falling, falling off the frame. This whole floor is smoke damage. You can see where the fire was along this door frame. It was billowing out of here. It's weird how the actual auditorium, though, has the least smoke damage. Must be something with the material. Yeah. But like, look behind you, this brick back here. That's charred. Yeah. It's the material. The material, the smoke just doesn't stick to it. Yeah. You can see where the fire got behind the material and all the plaster fell off. This is such a great auditorium though. It's just like better than a lot of actual purpose-built theaters that are out there, abandoned theaters. I don't think there's anything left in the projection booth. It looks empty. Oh, it's burned in here. No. Not a... <laughs> we're, all, we're all lined up, yeah. I'm filming us all in a row. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna take a seat. There's a back of a seat right there. Oh. One surviving oh, fuck. seat back. The last one? In the entire theater. The basement under the stage. Looks pretty destroyed from the hole over there. Oh, there's chairs under here. And Christmas decorations. We got Christmas decorations and chairs. Oh, civil defense supplies. Ice in here too. rusted out. That's what all the ice water is from. It's the civil defense <laughs> water. <laughs> right. We have to sound super sarcastic too or else people will think we're serious.
Christmas tree. This is under the stage now. Oh my god, ice everywhere. Oh, it's just like soft ice. And it's pretty deep. That's where the stage is collapsing. And these look like old props and backdrops. Old stage lights. Yeah. It's a cool view though. There's like steam right here. Look at this. I think it's just that whole area, the sunlight is hitting it and it's moist and cold. So it's instantly evaporating or it's a ghost. Really, what the heck? It's a ghost materializing right in front of us. Can you see this? Can you see this ghost from up there? Yeah, you see it right here? I've never seen anything like this. It's like getting more and more intense. These arches are cool. This is probably an administration area or something. So I was gonna say main entrance, but back here doesn't really look like it. Yeah, this looks like administration, office, principal's office, assistant principal at least. Separated. They probably have one side for up and one for down. Just looking in this hallway, you would never expect this theater to be right here. Because it just looks like a normal high school in the hallway. Let's check out the library though. Do you think the kids who went here realized how cool their school was compared to most kids' high schools? Most of them took it for granted or didn't care. These beams have unique hand-painted patterns on them. It's pretty neat. Really nice cornices. I feel like there would have been things in these nooks here at one point. Maybe pieces of art. Oh, you can see the original flooring under yeah. here. They put carpet over it. We're on the second floor. We're probably gonna go onto the track. Or maybe not, it's through here. These are probably locker rooms. There's some benches. See it opens up into something bigger? Yeah. Wow. This is cool. The track is banked. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they would have rode bikes or something or if they just used it for running. I think it's unusual for a running track to be banked. It is. But this whole thing's on the second floor. That means something's below us.
It is dark in here. Holy shit. They had like a little dividing wall in the middle too. Scrappers probably hit the ceiling of this room. Look at all the stuff on the floor in the bottom of the pool. It's hinged. And then it's shallow in the middle and deep on the two sides. It gets deep over here also. So they can turn it into two smaller pools. The numbering in the tile over there is pretty cool. Showers back here. Locker rooms. The Cooley Cardinals. What is this thing? I don't know. They move. A dryer? Maybe. Hot air would be blowing through here? I really don't know. Parks and Rec. Did they use this school for, as like a public park? Possibly. After it wasn't a school anymore? Or maybe it was a school and open to the public at the same time. It's so like on the weekends or something, the public could come use the pool. Back out to the hallways. Cooley Cardinals again. Wait, how are they a pool? Are and a stallion. And a stallion? What the heck? Maybe like a baseball team and a swimming team and a ba basketball team. I know. It's weird. The Bulls, the Cardinals, and the Stallions. Look well, here. There's a, a battery motion sensor camera thing. Two thousand eight. That's before the school closed. So these were there before. These were some of the last students. Twenty ten. There's graffiti from '04. Yeah. There's tubes for ventilation for the science classroom. It's so recognizable with the black countertops and the wood cabinets of the science room. Look at the detailed tiles and brickwork oh, yeah. on this power plant looking thing. goes up. This is the newer school. This expansion was built in 1972 yeah, to help alleviate overcrowding issues of the time. I'm expecting this to be not exciting, but we'll check it out. They literally ripped the glass out to put these boards in. Yeah. But they pulled the glass out to put wood in. Wow. It shows that they don't care about the place, they just care about keeping people out. Because that ruins the seal to the weather. Oh yeah, this half is much uglier. Much less interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there's some nice um, murals. Yeah, there's murals Marine there. biology class. I like how some of them are like fancy names that you wouldn't really know, like yeah. echinoderm, and then you just have bird. <laughs> You can see th above the drop ceiling, this building looks like a shed with metal rafters. Nowhere near as nice as the other building. An astronomy class. It's cool that they used the pole in the middle to draw the rocket on. Gives it some 3D effect. It's an old Geo's package. 
Look at this room. They still have the teacher's name and the date. Oh shit, 2010, yeah. Yeah, it's talking about finals. So this is definitely from right before it closed. Earth science. It's the roof. Oh, and there's some JROTC stuff up here too. Oh, it was a shooting range. Oh, you're right. Holy shit. Wow. Ear protection required when ranges in use. Can you imagine guns in a school today? Holy cow. That's insane. In today's context. That would never it's happen. insane to think this existed in a public high school. Yeah, there it is. Range safety. All weapons must be. This was a public school, right? Yeah. When a school would teach you to shoot guns. It's yeah, this is unfathomable. Cool. You could see the bullet holes back there yeah. where they ricochet they, off. They go through, and then they hit down here. And they either embed themselves in the wall or land down here in the sand. Explode. This is really cool. Oh yeah, I bet you they stored the guns in here. There have been a handful of proposed redevelopment plans for the complex, including apartments and community services. But with the water and fire damage, and damage from scrappers and vandals, it's unknown what the future will bring. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss our next Detroit episode. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. NordVPN makes it a breeze to protect yourself online using military-grade encryption. If you're connecting to any public network like cafes or hotels, you should be protecting your data. A VPN will give you peace of mind that nobody is snooping on your web traffic. It's also helpful if you just want to add that extra layer of security at home, and it will block your ISP from seeing exactly how you use the internet. Their simple-to-use applications allow you to connect to one of their thousands of servers in over 61 countries, and you can have up to six simultaneous connections with a single account. You can even choose a different country to connect as if you were there to get around region restrictions. NordVPN is giving our viewers 75% off a three-year plan with an extra month for free. Go to nordvpn.com slash properpeople and use the code properpeople at checkout. That's nordvpn.com slash p-r-o-p-e-r-p-e-o-p-l-e or click the link in the description.